Good afternoon to all of you. My name is Dr. John Flynn. I'm a retired academic. I spent uh, the last 30 years of my life in academia, and I was college dean, and um, I taught creative writing, of course. Uh, I've been writing since I was 18. So my work first work then. I'm going to be 64 next week. So I've been very active with this for many, many years. I'm both a science fiction uh, SFWA member as well as an MWA member, which is the Mystery Writers of America. In fact, uh, this is my latest book. It's from the uh, mystery genre, but uh, it all hinges on UFOs and Roswell and the MJ-12 group. And if you're interested in any of that stuff, I'm talking this afternoon at four on the extract about uh, the real Roswell and uh, the MJ-12. And I happen to write I was lucky enough to get the assignment to write the book that went along with Spielberg's War of the Worlds. So the book that I wrote was about H.G. Wells, his coming up with War of the Worlds, and then how that translated out into the movie that we all saw from Spielberg. And so I think that's one of the reasons why I got to be put on this panel. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Darren McDerrin. Um, I'll start kind of weirdly. Um, I came to the United States in 's and uh, one of those things is not like the other that's me I'm the paranormal romance writer um, but I got put onto this panel as moderator because um, I also write for three if by space.net which got its foundings in being one of the uh, major online blogs for falling skies back when it was on the air so I have a love of the genre as a consumer <coughs> as a consumer of media so that's why I think they want me to ask the questions instead of answering them, though. <laughs> and just so you know, there is a microphone up here in the front. So if any time you have a question you want to ask the panel, just feel free to come on up and hang it. There's a seat behind it. Sit down and buy it, and we'll know that ask a question when we're done with what we're doing. Or you could just do a torch though. <laughs> I apologize for going through the gruesome procedure of eating in front of you, but I'm diabetic. I got back to that panel, so I have. I just want to know if you brought enough to share with all of us. I was thinking that myself. <laughs> yeah. So um, I guess the main question we can start off with is um, we all know how you know aliens come down to Earth is, a, is considered to be invasion. Why? Why do, what are some of the ways that, that you feel the aliens are motivated to come on down here? Do you want something we have? Or need yeah. resources? Or well, that, I, I, think that's the, I think that's the simple answer. They're coming to get something that we have, like with the visitors that came for our water and they yeah, wanted to eat us. It is a rare source but, of But um, mm -hmm. I would also say that maybe they have other interests. So if we look at Clark's work, maybe they're here to help us on to that next stage in evolution. And so they may not have nefarious reasons, although that's what we often <coughs> seem much to. I'm allergic to the planet. <laughs> I must be an alien invader. Yeah, um, generally speaking, a lot of the um, justifications for alien invasions, particularly in the visual media treatments, are, are sort of very strange. There was that one M. Night Shyamalan hit 
Mm -hmm. They're here for our water. They're, no. they're, well, actually, I think, no, no, that was the one where they were here to attack us because they enjoyed it, but they were violently uh, or they're allergic to water. Water, right. water. And what are human beings composed of? They made a plant that's 70% water. And they attacked a species that's mostly a bag of seawater with contaminants. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that didn't really make much sense. People generally mm -hmm. don't stage invasions without some motivation. And I think that's one of the weaknesses of the genre. Um, H.G. Uh, Wells did it right. You know, the Martians needed the needed the living territory because Mars was, and this was fairly good science at the time, a dying planet. Yeah. So they wanted a be they wanted better real estate, which is a perfectly rational reason for invading somewhere, and that's why I'm here. But uh, and not growing turnips in England, um, but. Uh, you do have to supply some motivation, or they can be just so incomprehensibly alien no one understands them. <laughs> or sometimes they just want us and we need <coughs> genetic material. Um, and we are other things that we can contribute to their space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it could be something, not just our planet, but yeah. ourselves. To serve man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you see a lot of really, the particularly good ones are the ones you tend to remember. And one of the ones I like, but it's, it's hard to do right, is the uh, um, the idea of uh, who wrote the book? I'm trying to think. Was it Bear who wrote uh, Animal God? And they're basically here because they're they're genocidal. They're here to destroy us before we destroy them. So they run around the galaxy, and destroy every intelligent species that showed up. And they answered the question too about why is it squat? Why are the skies so quiet? Because if you're smart, you shut up. Otherwise, they spot you and come and kill you. Uh, the other one would be that they're here to take our stuff, our technology, use us in some way. Why? Because it's easier to have somebody else do it than it is for you. So you get the remote control robot invasion probe where they show up and they take you over and you start making, you know, microwave ovens for them, you know? So because that way they don't have to make them for themselves. <laughs> it's um, definitely better than here to get water, you know? I mean. For uh, for all of us, we think of Wells as being the starting point. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, there was an Australian who wrote a book four years earlier than uh, Wells's. In fact, it was published shortly before Wells, uh, called The Germ Growers. Robert Potter's book, they were aliens that wanted to grow a germ here. And it seemed like the right place to grow germs. And then ironically, it's those germs that destroyed the Martians and more of the worlds, which which of course we always go back to, but uh, Wells was sort of upstaged by that whole notion of alien invasion. Yeah, of course, I, I do have doubts about a species that can build interplanetary spaceships but hasn't discovered bacteria yet. <laughs> but when Wells was writing, bacteria, the, the bacterial theory was a new thing. It only really got going in the 1860s with Pasteur. And terrible trouble convincing people. And it was only really widely accepted around the time Wells was writing the story, so. Sometimes what happens is they come back to retrieve something they may have left behind. Mm -hmm. So that means that they were here before. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that becomes like a vicious cycle where they come, they need it, and they retrieve it. The movie it. Cocoon, it wasn't an invasion, but it, that's the idea. They were here a thousand years ago or something like that. Right, they had been colonists on Atlantis mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. along those lines. That's yeah. exactly what <laughs> Microphone right there. Oh. Unless you can project, then you can just project from your seat. One thing I, I hadn't heard anybody mention is just plain and simple scientific curiosity. Hey, there's this place. Let's go see what it's all about. We well, think they wouldn't invade. It, it always seems to be something sinister or something nefarious. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about us. The reason we went to the moon is, well, it was political. That was the impetus, but it was scientific curiosity. Yeah, but generally speaking, you don't have is to take... Is that too boring to write about? Well, you don't have to take... Maybe that would not be an invasion. Maybe that would be a... Kind of <coughs> where they just observe and you don't even know they're here. That's right. Like, like you may yeah. not make it. But any. again, I go back to Clark. Uh, he puts a monolith. The, the aliens put a monolith on <coughs> Earth after they... <coughs> I'm sorry. It's so bad. After they've been interacting with uh, uh, apes, and they want to find out if we have evolved to that stage where we could travel to the moon, and not just travel there, but excavate the moon. And of course, the monolith then lets, uh, you know, have a signal and lets them know that, you know, we're now worthy of maybe joining them in some intergalactic federation or whatever. So that wasn't, 
it, it was more more uplifting, exactly. It wasn't the <laughs> what they were doing. One that went into monolith actually performed an uplift on us. Sorry? They, they performed an uplift on us. They actually, because you couldn't see where the monkey's just running around scratching themselves. That's right. The monolith go, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, I can kill things. I can kill know? things, exactly. <laughs> Also, I think we might want to make a difference between just first contact and an invasion because a lot of times it may start to look like one thing where it's actually going to evolve into something completely unexpected. And that's what I think a lot of the really fun stories that we've read about, they always take this weird turn where you didn't think this was it or you got the opposite. Well, again, the, that notion of we have all of these spaceships and they're coming in and they're taking root over our different cities, you know, it looks like there's an invasion for but if we look at Clark's other work, uh, Childhood Men, that's not what they're doing. They're doing something completely, completely different. And then we see what they look like. <laughs> then we yeah. get to see what they look like. I thought the, mm. I, I didn't think the TV show executed very well, but. No, for the sci-fi uh, really, channel? Yeah. I don't yeah. think they did. Yeah, I think it, 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 it just wasn't well written on TV. It, it, it seemed to not have direction, but it was a great story. It really was. When I first read it, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, and you, you have to think through the implications of the technology you're giving the aliens when you're writing a story like this, right? If interstellar travel is, is cheap and easy for them, um, you know, that, that sets some of their, their objectives. For example, that means that they have access to virtually infinite supplies of energy. Moving things interstellar distances just takes a lot of energy, so if they've got energy to burn, they're not coming here for, like, natural gas. Um, <laughs> Plastic, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, contrary to, contrary to some, many stories, they're not coming here for our women either. You know, it's, 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 oh, well, the Mars, oh, Mars needs women. Mars, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it needs moms. <laughs> Mars, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you want minerals or something like that, it's a lot easier places to get it than the surface of a planet if you can move interstellar distances. Um, you know, you're not coming here for water when, like, lots of the solar system is composed of big chunks of water. Yeah. Um, so, so, second most common element in the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, maybe a maybe the bi biosphere is compatible, and they just want to live here. That would be, you know, because creating an entire planet with a with a uh, a compatible biosphere that might be worth invading for if you can travel interstellar di distances quickly so that it's not worth your while to go around terraforming uh, uh, planets to, to be compatible if you just can travel to one quickly. And there are inconvenient sapiens there, but you know, they're tasty, so. Although if you look at the uh, original film titled The Arrival versus the new film called Arrival, mm -hmm. in The Arrival, the aliens are actually terraforming the planet yes. and we're not supposed to be aware of it, you know, it's, yeah. You know, the greenhouse gases are doing that. Yeah, Rakuna Shelton, uh, Tiptree, did a story called The uh, Screwfy Solution.